Hi, it's Heather from Thicket Works, and today I want to share with you two of my favorite antiqued mirror effects. The first one involves using a stenciled motif in the background, and the second involves stamping motifs. Another method for making the most of this antiqued mirrored effect is to add an image transfer directly onto the outer surface of your antiqued mirror. This process results in stunning vintage signage effects. We won't be able to go into it here because it's frankly far too complicated. But if you're interested in obtaining these kinds of results and in the image transfer process in general, I hope you'll consider joining us for the online image transfer workshop. If you've ever struggled with the image transfer process, you'll find yourself in a supportive environment where we dive deep to reveal all the secrets. All right, let's get back to the tutorial. We'll be transforming plain, clear glass items into vintage foxed mirrored surfaces. And to do that, we'll need a few products. For this demo, I'll be using a variety of stamp sets from Iron Orchid Designs and this large scale stencil from Plaid also mirror effect spray paint and metallic spray paint, stays on ink, and ultra cover in both flat black and satin espresso. To distress these mirrored surfaces, I'll be using white vinegar and isopropyl alcohol. To avoid transferring oils from your skin to the glass surfaces, it's a good idea to wear protective gloves. To demonstrate the stenciled technique, I've chosen this thrift store picture frame. I'll be removing the frame and setting that aside and cleaning the glass on both sides with alcohol and a clean soft cloth. An old white towel has been sacrificed here to protect the glass and also help us be able to see the motifs that we add more clearly against that white surface. Make sure to allow the surface to dry before you continue with the process. A couple of things to keep in mind while we do this. Number one, we'll be working with spray paint, so that means two things. You need adequate ventilation or wear a respirator. And two, make sure that the surface underneath your project is one that you don't mind getting some overspray onto. Here I'm just applying two coats of Ultra Cover in flat black directly to the surface of the glass. And I'll just allow that same spray paint to dry on the surface of the stencil. Once the spray paint has dried completely, it's time to begin the layering and distressing process. Isopropyl alcohol is being sprayed in a fine mist over portions of the plain background and also directly onto the stenciled motif. I'm immediately following that application of alcohol with a light dusting of the mirror paint. Fanning the surface will help to encourage the spray paint to dry a bit more quickly. Once the spray paint is almost dry to the touch, but the underlying layer of alcohol is still moist, dab the surface with a baby wipe. I'm looking for a pretty intense distressed effect here, so now I'm splattering alcohol with my fingertips onto the surface, followed by another light dusting of mirror paint. Then coming in with a baby wipe and dabbing away where those droplets have created a resist, exposing more areas of clear glass. Another fine mist of isopropyl alcohol is sprayed over the top of those areas, and again, another layer of mirror paint. I'm dabbing back here quite aggressively in order to work my way through all of the layers, in some cases, even removing some of the original stenciled motif. Now that the first few layers of mirror paint and distressing have been created, I'm going to dial back the effects a little bit by switching to using a sprayed application of white vinegar rather than continuing with the alcohol. This will create a more subtle splattered effect as we continue to build the layers of mirror paint. I like to pause between the layers and flip the piece over to assess where I'd like to increase the amount of distressing. 
I've chosen to add more distressing to some of the areas on the back of this piece by using an extremely soft sanding sponge to add scratches and more marks. To soften those boldly distressed areas, I'm now coming back in with another spritz of white vinegar, followed by a layer of regular metallic spray paint. This will dull down the surface just slightly, but give us a subtle and beautifully speckled effect. One final pass with the baby wipe, and I'm satisfied with this surface. You can keep building layers as long as you like. I'm ready to seal the surface and create the final effect with a sprayed layer of satin espresso paint. Once that layer has dried completely, your piece is finished. Time to turn it over and get the final reveal. Now, the espresso paint has created slightly warmer toned areas where it shines through the layers of distressing. The addition of this rich color helps warm up areas of the piece and take it from something that might have felt slightly cold to something with delicious vintage charm. Now let's take a more delicate approach to the antiqued mirror effect using a stamped design as the basis. I'll be using Stazon ink, which is permanent on glass, and white vinegar for the distressing. Isopropyl alcohol will completely dissolve Stazon ink, so I will only be using that as part of the cleanup process to remove ink from any areas where I don't want it to be applied. Stamping on glass can be a little bit tricky, even if you're quite experienced. Here, I'm doing my best to obtain a nice, clean result, but I'm not terribly happy with the outcome. But with this method, that's not a problem because one spritz of isopropyl alcohol and we can wipe this away and start over. Okay, let's try this again. I'm being very careful with the placement of the stamp and to press firmly against the entire motif. Yep, that's a better stamped impression. It's important to remember that the final product will reveal the stamp design in its reverse, so it's important not to use any text stamp. Be careful not to smear the surface of the ink and use a heat tool to set the ink before attempting to apply further stamped motifs. I'm working in sections here, adding these two beautiful doves into the upper corners and this gorgeous swag below that central motif. Once those are in place, I'm heat setting the entire surface before continuing. Now that the stamped images are in place, it's time to gather the mirror effect paint the Ultra Cover 2x Flat Black, which we'll use for our final backing, and of course, white vinegar for the distressing. And we begin the process by applying splatters of white vinegar directly on top of our stamped designs. Follow up with a light spray coat of the Mirror Effect paint. Encourage that layer to dry slightly, and then you guessed it, grab your baby wipe and dab away at the areas of vinegar and spray paint. Add another layer of vinegar and another layer of mirror paint. You can continue to add layers as long as you like. For my purposes though, this two layer application is sufficient. Even though from the front this looks far too translucent, it will completely transform once we get the backing paint in place. It'll be gorgeous, you'll see. Make sure that the initial layers of vinegar and mirror paint are completely dry and then reach for your black spray paint. Create a full coverage layer and allow it to dry completely. Okay, here comes the reveal. This is always an exciting moment for me. I know, I'm easily amused. But oh yes, this is gorgeous and such an easy effect to achieve. And because the layers of stamping and mirror paint are trapped on the back side of the glass, nothing will ever damage 
this beautiful subtle foxing effect that you've created. Now you can seal the back even further with a clear coat if you like. These two methods of creating an antiqued mirror effect have brought me great delight over the years. I continue to use them both in so many of my home decor projects. I love this super distressed grungy effect with the bold stenciled design. The combination of mirror paint and regular metallic silver paint backed by the warm tones of the brown create a complex surface with a lot of detail. I think that the larger scale of the piece bears up really well to that heavier treatment, but I also adore this delicate tracery with the tiny speckles of foxing in the background and the intensity of the pure mirror paint with the black backing. Either method yields gorgeous results. Both of these methods utilize imagery, either stenciled or through the use of rubber stamps. But of course, there's no need to include imagery unless you're drawn to it like I am. The use of this antiqued mirror effect alone or in combination with imagery is going to result in surfaces that you'll fall in love with. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Until next time, bye.